Every loan agreement specifies an interest rate which the borrower must pay to the lender along with the repayment of the principal. In addition, lenders may demand collateral or security against loans. Collateral is an asset that the borrower owns such as land, building, vehicle, livestock, deposits with banks and uses this as a guarantee to a lender until the loan is repaid. If the borrower fails to repay the loan, the lender has the right to sell the asset or collateral to obtain payment. Property such as land titles, deposits with banks, livestock are some common examples of collateral used for borrowing. Interest rate, collateral and documentation required and the mode of repayment together comprise what is called the terms of credit. The terms of credit vary substantially from one credit arrangement to another. They may vary depending on the nature of the lender and the borrower. The next section will provide examples of the varying terms of credit in different credit arrangements. One. We have seen in the earlier examples that people obtain loans from various sources. Types of Loans Among the former are loans from banks and cooperatives. The informal lenders include money lenders, traders, employers, relatives and friends, etc. Here through the graph, you can see the various sources of credit to rural households in India. RBI The Reserve Bank of India supervises the functioning of formal sources of loans. For instance, we have seen that the banks maintain a minimum cash balance out of the deposits they receive. The RBI monitors that the banks actually maintain the cash balance. Similarly, the RBI sees that the banks give loans not just to profit-making businesses and traders but also to small cultivators, small-scale industries, to small borrowers, etc. Periodically, banks have to submit information to the RBI on how much they are lending, to whom, and at what interest rate, etc. There is no organization which supervises the credit activities of lenders in the informal sector. They can lend at whatever interest rate they choose. There is no one to stop them from using unfair means to get their money back.
compared to the formal lenders, most of the informal lenders charge a much higher interest on loans. Thus, the cost to the borrower of informal loans is much higher. Higher cost of borrowing means a large part of the earnings of the borrowers is used to repay the loan. Hence, borrowers have less income left for themselves as we saw for Savitri in Sonpur. In certain cases, the high interest rate of borrowing can mean that the amount to be repaid is greater than the income of the borrower. This could lead to increasing debt as we saw for Rama in Sonpur and debt trap. Also, people who might wish to start an enterprise by borrowing may not do so because of the high cost of borrowing. For these reasons, banks and cooperative societies need to lend more. This would lead to higher incomes and many people could then borrow cheaply for a variety of needs. They could grow crops, do business, set up small scale industries etc. They could set up new industries or trade in goods. Cheap and affordable credit is crucial for the country's development. Formal and informal credit. Who gets what? This graph shows the importance of formal and informal sources of credit for people in urban areas. The people are divided into four groups from poor to rich as shown in the graph. You can see that 85% of the loans taken by poor households in the urban areas are from the informal sources. Compare this with the rich urban households. Only 10% of their loans are from the informal sources while 90% are from the formal sources. A similar pattern is also found in the rural areas. The rich households are availing cheap credit from formal lenders. Whereas the poor households have to pay a heavy price for borrowing. What does all this suggest? First, the formal sector still meets only about half of the total credit needs of the rural people. The remaining credit needs are met from informal sources. Most loans from informal lenders carry a very high interest rate and do little to increase the income of the borrowers. One, it is necessary that banks and cooperatives increase their lending, particularly in the rural areas, so that the dependence on informal sources of credit reduces. Two, while formal sector loans need to expand, it is also necessary that everyone receives these loans.
At present, it is the richer households who receive formal credit. whereas the poor have to depend on the informal sources. It is important that the formal credit is distributed more equally so that the poor can benefit from cheaper loans.